Hello, everybody. This is Mr. Kimball, of course. Um, as you know, I am not at school. It is Monday, November 9th, whenever you receive this message. Uh, I do want to talk to you about what your next expectation is. So on Wednesday, uh, the 4th, when I was actually wearing this bow tie, uh, I talked to you about what your next assignment is going to be. And I was giving you a little bit of forward thinking, trying to plant that seed in your head so that you knew that whenever you came back to school on Monday, basically what your expectations were going to be. And then you were going to get started on Monday as Mr. Spidell and a substitute teacher are in the room with you. Uh, so I want to remind you, even though this says college application or common application, it's not just for college. It can absolutely be used for a job. And it gives you an opportunity to brag on yourself, and talk about your positive qualities or things that have happened in your life that have helped you mature, to move forward, to grow, uh, something that's going to be an asset to the college or career that you're trying to get into. It's always a good idea to reflect on your life reflect on what has been positive, reflect on how you've gone through the negative and had an opportunity to increase, become a better person for it. So what I'm sharing with you, this document is the common application essay. I copied and pasted that PDF that I showed you on Wednesday into a regular document. And I have those same seven prompts listed here. I am not going to read through those. You can read those yourself and you've already been introduced to them a little bit. So this is just a reminder section for you, but below uh, this document or below those seven prompts, I'm giving you the expectations for your actual paper, and that is here. I do want to talk you through that. So this is going to be an essay, and I want you to treat it like a formal essay. So you want to make sure that you are keeping it as clean as possible, as free of mistakes as possible. And remember, paying attention to detail is always a good attribute. So we go through the list. First of all, your essay will be written in standardized English. We are not going to allow any kind of slang or common kind of, um, you know, just comfortable language. We don't want that. We want it to be standardized English. That means no contractions. Uh, you will write out the words uh, whenever you have those numbers that we talked about in class for your um, for the college, sorry, for the um, cover letter. It's been a long day. Uh, for the cover letter, we were talking about making sure that you, um, you know, capitalized your personal pronouns, that you basically wrote in standardized English, wrote the numbers out like you were supposed to. So if you had like a number two or a number three, you're writing that, those out. And Mr. Spidell was correct. The general rule is anything less than 100, you would write out in uh, written form and anything 100 and above, you can use your numeric digits. Okay. Due to the personal nature of this essay, first person pronouns and past tense verbs may be used. Remember, most of these essay prompts are about you telling a story. So it is okay to use your personal pronoun and it is acceptable to use the past tense verb there. I apologize, this is moving so much. I'm trying to get that to stop. Number two, word count. This is going to be important. This is one of the few times that I actually do have a word count here because most college essays actually include a word count also that is somewhere around this level. Word count will not be less than 500 and it will not exceed 650 words. So somewhere between 500 words and 650 words is what your final product will be. And that is going to be the essay portion, not the extra stuff. So that is not going to include the title and it is not going to include the heading that is going to be talked about in just a moment. Point number three, essay will include an introductory paragraph, body paragraphs, and a conclusion paragraph. Your intro paragraph will have to have a hook, a bridge, and a thesis statement. And I will be giving you that no red ink lesson about what a hook, bridge, and thesis statement is uh, during the writing of this paper. So that no red ink lesson is going to help you with this paper. Letter B, body paragraphs will have a claim, evidence, and reasoning. That's literally what our no red ink 
lessons have been right now. So that's current information. You're going to practice that in this paper. And your conclusion paragraph is going to have a restated thesis statement and a call to action. That call to action just means you're going to give your reader, your boss, your college uh, board that might be looking at your stuff, what uh, directions you want them to follow. Like, do you want them to accept you? Do you want them to give you money? Do you want them to give you an opportunity? Uh, some kind of call to action. And we will talk about that in more detail in class. Your font will be a professional font. Remember, you are not going to be allowed to use, as I scroll this down, um, I think it'll show up on the screen here. Um, so something like Berkshire, you're not going to use those. Nothing like Bree. You're not going to use any of the calligraphy, calligraphy graffiti, none of those, okay? So it needs to be some kind of a professional font. I would accept something like Droid, Serif, uh, Georgia, which is in fact what this font is. Um, you know, none of the handwriting types of fonts. Libra was okay, Meriwether is okay. Like there's a lot of choice for you, but stay away from the creative, types of fonts that you would use in like greeting cards or something that's a little more casual. You want to keep your font more of a professional font. The size will remain 12 points though. We are not blind and we know how to manipulate our computer screens. So you will be asked to keep your font at 12. That's standard. Your alignment will be left justification like this one is. You need to have it at the left side of your page. You will have double spacing throughout the entire essay. That is not on what you see right here. This is not double space, this is single space. So before you write anything on your document, I would suggest that you put double spacing as its default. And that way you never have to worry about it again and you won't have to hit enter between uh, you know, the heading and the title or anything like that. Matter of fact, you wouldn't hit enter at all except to go into a new paragraph but i don't want the extra spaces between paragraphs either and we'll make sure that we clarify that before you turn in your paper number eight the heading will be in a formal uh, format what that means is there's going to be four lines in the top left of your paper it's going to start with your name then it's going to have the class name and i would suggest the english four applied name, not so much the Foghorn Leghorn or Yaki Doodle. Uh, you want, again, staying with the formal side of things. So you're going to write English for applied there. Then you will have teacher name, and that can include both of our names, Mr. Spidell and Mr. Kimball. The assignment due date, and as of right now, that's going to be, and I think I put that at the very top of the page, that's gonna be November 18th. You would actually type it in your heading as, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and type it this way. You'll have the day of the month first, then you will have the month and then the year. So it'll be in that format, 18 November, 2020. That's what it should look like in your heading, okay? So your name, class name, teacher names, assignment due date. And then finally, the last piece, the title will reflect the content of the essay. So please do not have just a generic title there. My phone is going off, I'm going to ignore that. Uh, the title is gonna reflect the content of the essay. So something creative, but something that lets the reader know what the paper is gonna be about. Uh, it, will only, it will be the only line in the essay that will be centered and it will be devoid of extra identification. So do not change the font size. Very common with students, they want to do something extra with that title, don't. So do not change the font size, do not make it underlined or bold, do not put quotation marks around it. It'll be the exact same print and size as the rest of the paper. Don't do anything extra with it. And then you also do not want to have extra um, space between the heading and the title or the title and the first line of your paper. So no extra lines before or after um, the title. 
And then as far as the rubric is concerned, I'm still working on that. I will put that on this document. So probably by the time you see this in Google Classroom, it is going to be entered in there. So the rubric you will see here with the point values, um, just at the timing that I'm trying to record this before parent-teacher conferences start tonight. So I wanted to get this video made. Uh, you will see the rubric on this exact same paper. As a matter of fact, by the time you see this, you probably already have seen the rubric. Okay, all of this information is going to be in Google Classroom under Class Work, and it is going to be listed as an assignment, so everything will be in one location. You'll be able to create your document. Uh, you'll be able to start typing and do everything in that location. So this is what we will be doing over the next couple of weeks. So at this point, your job on Monday, November 9th, is to decide which of the prompts you're going to be writing and then start to brainstorm information that is going to be included in your paper. So today is about information gathering, idea formation, uh, the planning part of your paper is what you should be working on in class today. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Spido and let him guide you through this process. Have a great day, guys, and I will see you on Wednesday.